Welcome, and thank you for joining our webinar on viewing the latest feature releases for Salesforce. My name is Ali Pakalnis, and I will help facilitate our webinar today. Before we get started, here are a few tips on using the Zoom platform so you can engage with our presenters and have the best experience possible. Next slide. You should see a Zoom toolbar with icons for ask a question and raise your hand. Please use the ask a question feature to submit a question or comment. If you need any assistance, click on the raise your hand button and I will connect with you to help. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation and we will do our best to answer them all. If we didn't answer your question, we will follow up with you personally after the presentation. Within 72 hours of the webinar, you will receive a link to download the slide deck and recorded presentation. Next slide. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to our presenters, Turner Jones and Mozam Khan. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mozam Khan. Uh, I'm a senior consultant here in the Salesforce team at Armanino. I've been here at Armanino for about four and a half years. I specialize in Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, and CPQ. And I'm excited to present this release webinar for summer 23 for everyone here. And along with me, it's Turner. Thanks, Mozam. Um, so I'm Turner Jones. I'm one of the leaders of our Salesforce delivery, uh, delivery practice. I've been working with Salesforce for about 10 years. And um, like Mozam, specialize in CPQ and also nonprofit implementations. Great. Thank you. All right, so today's uh, webinar here, we are um, going to have a couple um, learning objectives that we are going to uh, be covering. So the first one is to identify the new release features and updates of your solution. Uh, next is to demonstrate the new user experience and navigation to ease adoption. Um, next is to understand how to manage the latest release to maximize its capabilities. So to start off, we have a polling question. You can probably see that on your screen. Yep. So the first question is, which category of Salesforce users do you belong to? If you're an administrator, consultant, or a general or power user. All right, the results are in. Uh, looks like we have 83% um, of our uh, viewers here that are general or power users. And then we have about 17% who are consultants. Nice. Thank you all for voting for that. Moving forward. So uh, to start off, um, we are going to have two different focuses. The first focus here is the user-focused features that are in the summer release. The first one um, on the agenda is the enhanced lightning dashboards. After that, we'll cover the mass quick actions on related lists, um, then the new lightning email composer, and then the calendar enhancements. And after that, the undo field changes feature. Next will be the admin-focused um, features. Uh, we have the permission sets, field level security, the in-app guidance, field specific, migrate to flow support scheduled actions, gender neutral salutations, dynamic forms, horizontal alignment, and cloning apps. So let's start with the user focused. All right. First one is the enhanced Lightning dashboards. With the summer 23 release, there are exciting updates to the Lightning dashboards. When setting up a dashboard, you will now be able to engage and guide users with rich text where they need it. Along with that, you will also be able to add company logos, branding content, diagrams, and other types of images. This also includes animated GIFs. This will help users be more engaged 
and see much more than just data on the dashboards. One thing to note as well, uh, previously known as components on the dashboards, uh, now uh, Salesforce is labeling them as widgets. Um, dashboards now can have 25 total widgets compared to the 20 maximum from before. Really exciting update here. More user engaging. That is our first one. And this carries on to the next slide here um, as there are many uh, lightning dashboard updates. So uh, two more exciting updates on this slide here. Uh, the first one is the dashboard filters. Uh, the new release added two more filters to the dashboards, totaling five filters compared to the total of three before. This will enable users to utilize and utilize the same dashboard instead of cloning and replicating the dashboards many times. Moving from three filters to five filters will allow to save time and effort by refining your dashboards. Second update here is being able to post dashboards directly to Slack. As a quick background, Salesforce acquired Slack in 2021, and you can now integrate Slack and Salesforce to share activities, messages, and Salesforce records across both systems. To achieve this, admins, admins will have to install the CRM analytics app in Slack, and users will be able to click the post to Slack icon as shown in the image. Hey, Muslim, uh, mm -hmm. a question. Do this, do the dashboards you post in Slack, do they update in real time? So uh, that's a great question. So within Slack, users will be able to click on the dashboard names and view it in Salesforce. So if someone is sharing, if someone clicks on that button and it gets into Slack, they'll be able to click on the name and view it in Salesforce. Uh, they can also share, subscribe, and view snapshots of the dashboard in Slack. So it's not a live view, but they will get a snapshot of it, and they will be able to click it and get directly access to it in Salesforce, and also just view a snapshot of it within um, Slack itself. Nice. Yep. Up next, uh, this is an exciting one as well. Mass quick actions on related lists. This new update uh, to have mass quick actions in the related list section will uh, save users time by decluttering the action buttons on top of the page and distributing them to the relevant related list. Users will be able to create records directly from the same page and also perform mass updates to the related records instead of opening them one by one. So you can see the screenshot there shows uh, how that will be possible. Instead of stacking them up on top of the page, it will be distributed on the actual relevant related list. All right. Um, is there, hey, Mozam, is there a limit on the number of records you can? Um, yes, uh, uh, that uh, there should be about, I think up to a hundred related records using the quick action button. So in the screenshot, you can see view all. Once you click that, um, if up to 100 records, you can select, and then you can click on the update you know, record button, and that will lead you to you know, update up to 100. Hope that answers the question. All right. Uh, one more thing um, I wanted to mention is uh, setting this up. Um, the way you would do that is pretty much how you would set up uh, your existing quick actions. And you would just go into the object manager and click on uh, buttons, links, and actions, and set up a new update record button and assign the fields that should be shown on that update page. And once that is done, you have your regular quick action button. You just go to the lightning page record and you'll be able to add that directly to the related list. So that is how you would be able to do that as an admin. But as a user, you have this user interface that is set up how it is and you'll be able to update mass update. 
Up next is the new Lightning Emo Composer. Salesforce is retiring the existing Emo Editor and moving to a feature-rich HTML text editor that's packed full of exciting features. The Lightning Editor is now open beta in summer 23. All the new features are in the picture listed with a star next to them. Some of them include copy pasting from external sources, table modifications and formatting, full screen mode, search and replace, and export to PDF. The current email editor within Salesforce is very limited and does not allow majority of what other email editors have, such as adding in tables, exporting to PDF, or as simple as copy pasting without it being an issue. This new update will elevate how emails are edited and better than uh, better the user experience within Salesforce. Uh, one more thing to note is these new features will be backward compatible with all content created in the old editor. So if you had anything from before, any drafts and emails, you'll be able to go back and modify those using the new editor. There's a lot of information on this here. All the stars are the new items. Up next is the calendar enhancements. Um, you will now be able to view up to 500 events. Uh, you will be able to drag events to reschedule compared to before. You would have to click into it and uh, you know change the time that way. But now you will be able to just drag and drop, and that will help you reschedule. Uh, clicking an event to preview instead of hovering. Um, before it was an issue where you know anytime you would hover over the events, it would take up the screen, but now you would have to click into it. So better user enhancements there, UI. Uh, events can now be shared with 50 calendars and resources. There was a limitation before, but now it's opened up to much more, which is 50. So lots of enhancements there. These are just a few. Their calendar has uh, picked up a lot, a lot of new features. All right, undo field changes. This is a new feature here. Users can now quickly undo field changes as they edit an input field on a lightning record page that is not dynamic forms enabled. So if you have dynamic forms enabled, this will not work. If on a regular lightning record page, this will work where you can see in this short video here, um, as you go ahead and type, sometimes you modify a record and you lose track of what it was before. But now you can easily click that undo button and that should reset the way how it was. And the field is highlighted with a yellow background color as well. Now we are moving over to the more admin focused um, features here. So the first one here is the permission sets and field level security. With Salesforce letting go of profiles in the near future, permission sets will be primary for user permissions and access. This was in beta before, but now generally available and highly encouraged for admins to start assigning permissions via permission sets. This will be exactly how fields are assigned permissions on the profile level. This update also provides an enhancement that enables you to see each permission set, each permission sets object permissions for the fields object without leaving the page. So a lot more updates to the permission sets and highly encouraged for your existing um, profiles to turn into you know, permission sets right there. I think we have a, there's no date. Or uh, we just have a question here. Uh, uh, when is it expected that Salesforce will retire profiles? Uh, we don't have uh, a date to it, but they are encouraging everyone to do it soon. Uh, just as you know, many other things are retiring within Salesforce. Uh, it's more of an open, open thing right now. They haven't decided on a date, but probably I would, I would assume in in about a year or less than a year because it is a big change. All right. This one here uh, is the in-app guidance field specific. So 
In-app guidance has a new update. This feature originally allows admins to set up walkthroughs with guidance prompts as docked or floating prompt areas. So users will be able to get instructions and messages on each page targeting specific users and for a specified amount of time. Uh, this new update allows the admins to set up field specific guidance, guidance prompts where they can now target any field on a record page, dynamic form or uh, the create record window. So any three of those, whether it's the record page, a dynamic form or the create record window, uh, you'll be able to have a targeted prompt that the admins will be able to create with the in-app guidance builder. This will allow admins to add more granular specific guidance for users who need to learn your processes within Salesforce. Um, hey, Mozam, I've actually got two questions. Mm -hmm. um, sure. so first question is actually around when Salesforce is retiring profiles. Yep, um, uh, I think I just answered that one on the last um, slide. Yeah, it's actually, so it's expected in the spring 26 release. Spring 26, nice, thank you. Yep, um, and then on this in-app guidance, um, I guess, can you talk about the difference between this and like the help text that people are used to? Sure, uh, with this new feature, it's uh, uh, basically what the in-app guidance is doing is it, it's uh, user, users will have to cover over the I next to the fields for the help text, uh, usually for any information, and that's done manually versus what the in-app guidance is going to do is uh, it's going to drive right when you visit a record or when you try to create a record, it's going to drive the users. And as you can see in the video here, it's going to highlight that field and whatever message the admin puts there to guide them, that is what's going to be uh, focused on. So that is a big difference versus help text where uh, that is done manually and this one is more targeted and it's going to be focused whether it's temporary or a permanent guidance. So every time someone visits the page, the admins can have it where it focuses on a specific field or if it's, let's just say, uh, for training uh, on a new profile, they'll be able to do that. So every the first time they visit, it will do that and guide them on specific fields. So it's more to bring attention uh, to a specific field or just overall the page. The new update just focuses more on a specific field. All right, so process builders are going away. Uh, so the migrate to flow supports scheduled actions. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, as process builders are going away, uh, Salesforce has been ramping up support for converting process builders into flows. This is the latest update where uh, the process builders uh, role of criteria will be able to convert into flows and the entry condition will ensure that the scheduled paths run correctly. So if you have a process builder, you take the criteria and the entry condition and convert that into a flow. If you have multiple rows selected uh, while you're clicking the uh, button for migrating, uh, if multiple rows are selected, only the immediate paths will be migrated. So the first path will be migrated there. So it's a really helpful tool. Support is picking up on migration for the process builders. Uh, uh, just the latest update right now is you, uh, from what I believe, it's they took out the new create new process builder button um, just very recently. So it's time to convert over to flows. Up next is gender neutral salutations. Um, MX is now a pick list option in the salutation field. It is default in the new orgs after summer 2023. Uh, for older orgs, the admins will have to add the salutation into the pick list field there. All right, uh, dynamic forms horizontal alignment. Um, this will help um, the admins to align fields horizontally. They will have to check the settings as they're setting up on the field section in the Lightning App Builder. Uh, it allows the fields to 
um, across the columns, resulting in better visual experience on the page layouts. Uh, so you can see in the example there, if it's not aligned correctly, you can click that button and automatically it will align the fields on the dynamic forms horizontally. Up next is the cloning of apps. So uh, admins often need to create custom apps for different departments and business units and their organizations with similar use cases. These apps may have few differences, but creating them from scratch can be time consuming and inefficient. So this new feature enables the admins to quickly clone an existing custom app and make changes like branding, navigation style, utility bar, as well as app assignments without having to start from the beginning. And in order for you to do this, you just uh, go to the app and next to it, you just uh, click the clone button and you should be able to achieve uh, the full uh, change like that. All right, we have another polling question here. So this is a knowledge check. So what is the one user-related feature Salesforce will be removing in the near future? I <laughs> actually had a question about this. Uh, permission sets, sharing sets, profiles, or groups? All right, we just got the results in. What is the one user-related feature Salesforce will be removing in the near future? 100% vote goes to profiles. That is correct. Thank you everyone for that. All right, so um, that is the updates that we have for the release. And also, we would like to mention here that Armenino has virtual classes. Um, whether you have new employees that need to get set up or up to speed quickly, or simply need to learn more features and functionality of Salesforce, you can check that out in our Armenino Academy. Um, as mentioned, uh, you will be getting a copy of this presentation, so you can you have the URL there, and there's many more resources for you to reach that. And with that, I would like to thank everyone for attending and if you have any additional questions please put them in the q a box and you can also reach out to us at experts at armenino.com and um, with that i will hand it over to ali if, uh, if anyone has any questions, we are here, Turner and I, we can answer any of those questions. Thanks, Mozam and Turner. Um, I don't see any more questions for today, but like you said, reach out to experts at armenino.com if any come up. Um, so I think that wraps up our presentation. Thank you for attending, and please remember to complete the survey as you close out of the webinar. Have a great day.